Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Taylor series and Maclaurin series. Which, if you don't know, Maclaurin series are the same thing as Taylor series when we're centered at a equals zero. But before I get more into that, let's talk about what's the formula for Taylor series. So Taylor series follow a very specific formula. It goes something like this. f of a, where a is the center point, plus f prime of a times x minus a to the first power divided by 1 factorial, which I know I don't need to write a lot of this because it can be simplified, but I'm just showing you so we can get the pattern recognition down. And then the next term is plus f double prime of a times x minus a squared over 2 factorial plus dot dot dot. I feel like you see where it's going here. Every Taylor series and Maclaurin series has three parts. The derivative part, which I call nth derivative of f of a, times the x part, which is x minus a to the nth power, divided by the factorial part, n factorial. So in other words, every Taylor series has three parts, the derivative part, the x minus a part, and the factorial part. And so if I want to find the Taylor series, or Maclaurin series, for any function, here's what I do. Let's start with an easy one f of x equals sine x, centered at a equals zero. So the first thing I like to do is, I like to take the first three or four derivatives of my function, basically enough until I start seeing the pattern emerge. So the first derivative of sine x is cosine x, the second derivative is gonna be negative sine x, the third derivative is negative cosine x, and the fourth derivative brings me back to positive sine x. And I can definitely see the pattern emerging now. So then I go back to the beginning, and I need to plug in my a value, which is zero, into all of these functions. So for instance, sine of zero, hopefully you know that it's zero, it's not one. f prime of zero, cosine of zero is one. f double prime of zero, the sine of zero should be zero. Third derivative, cosine, it's gonna be negative one because it's negative cosine. And finally, the fourth derivative brings us back to zero. And so I definitely see there's gonna be a pattern emerging, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, and then it repeats. And so that means when I plug it into my formula, which I will write the general formula here, and you can go to as many terms as you want. I'll see how many terms fit on my page. So first for f of zero, that's gonna just be zero plus f prime of zero, which we said was one, times x minus zero to the first, I'll simplify later, divided by one factorial, plus the next term, the second derivative was zero, that whole thing will be zero, so I don't even need to worry about it. The third term is gonna be third derivative, so negative one, times x minus zero cubed over three factorial. Next term is zero again, and I'll go one more, the fifth term would be positive one again, times x minus zero to the fifth over five factorial. And so if I simplify this and remove all of the zeros, then I will get x minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial, and then minus dot, dot, dot. The other thing I wanna say is that there's different things the question might be asking for. The question might ask you to write the first three non-zero terms, in other words, skip the zeros. And if that's the case, then just this would be my answer right there. Something else the question might be asking for is write the third degree Taylor polynomial. And if you see the question ask that, it means you stop writing after you get to x cubed. So for instance here, I would just write x minus x cubed over three factorial, and that would be it. If they asked for the fourth degree Taylor polynomial, and I see here that there is no x to the fourth because that was just zero, it would be identical to the third degree Taylor polynomial because the fourth degree is zero, so I don't need to write that. And then the last thing they might ask for is to write the Taylor series in some kind of sigma notation. So in other words, this is where the pattern recognition stuff really, you need to become good at this over time. It takes a lot of practice. 
But remember, my terms looked like this, and from here I can see the pattern emerging. Remember that every Taylor series has three parts. The derivative part, the x to the n part, and the n factorial part. The derivative part is really just the coefficient. In other words, it's the one here, or the negative one here, or the positive one here. And so the pattern I see emerging is that in the numerator, I'm gonna have negative one to the nth power because it's alternating, and if I'm plugging in n equals zero first, that will get me a positive number, so I like that. Then for the x part, this is, well, not as easy as it looks. I would love to say it's x to the n, but the problem is I need every odd integer. So how am I gonna get that if I'm starting at zero? It's going to be 2n plus one. The 2n gets me to skip every other number, but the plus one actually gets me the odd number specifically. If I left it as x to the 2n, it would just be all the even numbers. And then finally, in the denominator, I need the same thing matching the exponent. So it's quantity 2n plus 1 factorial. And yes, this and this will usually end up equaling each other. And this is my answer for the Taylor series. And by the way, if the question asked for the Maclaurin series, the good news is everything I just said would be the same because Maclaurin series are just a special case where we're centered at a equals zero, which is exactly what we just did. And before we look at the next example, let me just show you what we're doing here in Desmos. So here's the function sine x. And if I did the very first term only, here's the function x. As you can see, this is not a very good approximation. The blue line barely equals the red line at all. However, once we start adding in more terms, like look at this, this is just the first two terms, you're starting to get that curvy pattern going on. And if you were to keep adding more terms, okay, yeah, now, now I can really start to see it. And basically, the more terms you add, the better of an approximation it's going to be. But the one thing I want you to notice is the fact that it perfectly matches sine x at the point x equals 0. And that's because we said a equals 0. If we found another Taylor series that's centered around another point, like maybe 2 or something, then we would actually get a really good approximation around the point two right there. But is this graph important for the test? No, not at all. What's important is that we follow the steps for Taylor series and Maclaurin series. So now we're gonna do one more example together. For this one, it's the function f of x equals e to the x, and I'm going to have it centered at a equals two this time. So why don't you give this one a try on your own if you get stuck, then watch my video for the solution, but we're doing the exact same thing as the last one, and I want you to write the Taylor series specifically with the sigma notation, so finish the Taylor series. So go ahead, give it a try, and when you're ready to see the solution, unpause the video. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write out the first three or four derivatives. So first, f of x is e to the x, f prime of x is also gonna be e to the x. And yes, all of these derivatives are the same, it's just e to the x every time, which is great. Very easy to spot the pattern. And then don't forget, I gotta plug in my a value, which is two in this case. So it's gonna be e squared for the first derivative. It's also gonna be e squared. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's e squared every time. And honestly, you can probably stop writing this as soon as you see the first derivative, because we know that all of these are gonna be the same. So then finally plugging in my formula, it's gonna be f of a, which is f of two, so e squared, plus the first derivative, e squared, times x minus two to the first, divided by one factorial. The next one is plus e squared times x minus two to the second over two factorial, and then plus dot, dot, dot. I can write plus dot, 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 because I see the pattern here. And the pattern is gonna be the series from n equals zero to infinity. First, the derivative part, which comes from the constant. And it looks like the constant is e squared every time. So e squared in the numerator, that's how we start out. Then for the x minus a part, that's just gonna be x minus two to the nth power, because I'm not skipping any values and because I'm starting at zero, and that's why it's just e squared all by its lonesome there. And then in the denominator, it's gonna be n factorial because it's going up by one each time. In case you're curious, the first one is divided by zero factorial. Zero factorial is not zero, it is one, so it still follows all our rules. 
And so therefore, this is my answer for the Taylor series. And that's basically it. Now, one more thing I want to say before I end the video. Here is a list of a bunch of Taylor series that I think are worth memorizing. A lot of times the teacher or professor will tell you to memorize these or they'll give you a sheet on the test that you can follow. Basically, they're Maclaurin series we see all the time, so don't be surprised if you see one of these on a test. Especially because we can use shortcut rules to do more things with these Maclaurin series, and I'll cover the shortcut rules in a separate video. So that's it for this one. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.